Hey, 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 it is Paul Jang, and uh, today we're going to be talking about raw land investing. Um, specifically with risk management, how to not lose your shirt while investing in land. So if you're interested in that topic, stay tuned for this video. So we're going to get right to it. So when I uh, put in money for land, one of the greatest benefits, uh, whether the property, you know, after I buy it, whether I'm able to sell it or not, is that I've obtained an asset that is going to be land. It's going to be there, right? There's no real potential debt, like potential things that could, you know, happen that like would damage the property or for it to lose its value. It's it's rural vacant land. So uh, here's the thing. If you want to manage your risk, one of the first things you're gonna have to do is understand how to go through this process, right? So the first step, uh, you know, I'll give you a couple steps. The first step is getting some kind of online course or some training. You can watch the other videos I have. There's other land investors that talk about land investing in uh, YouTube. So you could, you know, just YouTube different land investing videos um, or rural vacant land investing videos. There's podcasts that you can check out and Facebook groups that you could join to get information and just start kind of plugging yourself, understanding how this works, right? Um, a course will kind of like lay out everything for you um, and give you kind of step-by-step -step instructions. And you could check out like what, you know, different people have to offer. Everyone kind of has a different strategy of sorts, but you know, we'll, like I'll have a video later on that will um, show you that. And at that point, I'll also put it in the description below. It's kind of talking about everything. But so that's like the first step, kind of getting an online course, getting some kind of training, some kind of step-by-step -step sequence, or kind of filling in those gaps yourself, right? By doing your own research, right? Um, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do to manage your risk is to do some research in terms of what property you wanna get. Um, and in terms of the property that you wanna get, you're gonna to have to find uh, a good data source, right? There's different ones out there. The one that I use a lot is Agent Pro 247. Uh, it's a, it started with a title company that started amassing a bunch of data from counties and such. And they have a record in place to get information about property, right? And it doesn't have to just be with land. Uh, it's also with houses, but uh, specifically with land, there's, uh, sometimes there's addresses, sometimes there's not, uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, you almost always there'll be a homeowner, uh, a landowner's name with a mailing address because they're getting information from the county and the county needs to know that information to send the tax bill out to the landowner. And if the landowner doesn't pay, uh, they can sell it out for auction. So a lot of this information is public knowledge. Uh, this company's just kind of amassed it, right? And there's different ones out there. I just found Agent Pro 2 for 7 to be good and cheap. So you're gonna need to know where the property is located. Uh, once you get the GPS coordinate from Agent Pro 247, you can actually export it. You can throw in the GPS coordinates right into Google Maps. It's the easiest way to do it. And you can call the county, um, figure out any zoning issues if that's important to you. You know, if you could hunt on it, you know, put a mobile home on it or, or whatever, right? Uh, get your research done. My goal, whenever I'm trying to manage risk, is to buy property super cheap. And I'm talking 25 cents on the dollar. Now here's the thing, there's multiple ways, multiple strategies in terms of how you can get your land, right? I'll tell you one of them. One of them is to just go to a tax auction, a tax deed state auction, and those places um, uh, will sell property to you, houses, land, um, commercial property is a little bit hard to get, but uh, a lot of residential properties and land are sold on tax auctions. You're, you're gonna have to wanna research tax deeds and tax lien you know, states, but generally for a tax deed sales auction, they'll give you the property right on the spot, you know, after you pay them their back taxes. So why would this happen? Basically, if you don't pay property taxes, um, the county will sell your land, your land or your house, right? Um, if you own a house, you have property taxes on it. If you didn't pay the property taxes, the county would take your house and sell it. The thing, the reason it doesn't happen is because, um, you know, typically with a more like a bank, they'll have a mortgage on your, on your house and they want to make sure that, um, there's not a situation that the county would sell the property, even though there's a mortgage on the property. So in order to, you know, guarantee their own, um, you know, asset, their mortgage on the property, 
uh, what they'll do is they'll combine the mortgage and your property taxes for the year and just combine it for your monthly payments. And then at the end of the year, they'll, they'll use, you know, whatever they estimated in terms of property taxes and use that money in escrow to pay off the uh, county. Now, typically with land, that's not really an option. Uh, typically with land, you know, you're not really dealing with banks that are going to put mortgages on it. Um, they consider it a higher risk because, you know, unless there's some kind of dwelling in place, uh, it's so easy to just walk away from land. So banks don't really want to want to deal with rural vacant land because of that reason. And generally for rural vacant land, it's just much cheaper than if you're going to buy a property with land and a house on it. So the numbers don't doesn't work really for a bank to really get involved with it. So uh, you'll see a lot of land going into tax auctions and you'll buy them uh, 25 cents on the dollar. So what this means is in terms of your risk that you know if you have a property that's worth 10,000 in the open market, you're, you're able to buy it for $2,500. That means that there's $7,500 uh, room there that you know, if you made a mistake and the actual market for this property is eight thousand, there's a there's a nice enough cushion there that you can double or triple your uh, initial investments. So um, those are some of the ways right now. Like we talked about three, three um, getting kind of acclimated to the land investing world, um, getting some kind of step by step like process in terms of understanding the land investing niche, and then. Um, uh, researching the counties and the areas that you generally want to invest in, right? So <clears throat> kind of understanding the market. And then thirdly, uh, finding deals like super cheap so that there's a nice cushion. So all these things kind of lower your risk, you know, in terms of your initial investments, your time, that you're getting a really solid deal and you're going to come out on top after all of this. Uh, the next thing you want to check is uh, check title and potential liens. So it, it's pretty uncommon to have a mortgage on it, but um, you will see that a lot of people, whenever they own their property outright, they might not do a good, at, you know, a good job um, paying the property taxes, um, you know, consistently every year. So there's sometimes that there's back taxes on properties and they haven't gone through the auction process yet. So if you're coming in there and you're um, potentially buying land, not from tax auction, but directly from the homeowner, uh, you might want to check the liens to see if there's any back taxes. And you'll also find, uh, funny enough, you'll get like these kind of scenarios where mom and dad, you know, died, right? And, you know, their son or daughter got the land uh, or, you know, house. We'll, we'll just talk about land, right? After they died, but, they had a will, but it wasn't a will, you know, like there's these scenarios like that, right? When someone passed away and they're trying to sell this land, but having gone through the legal process of it. And that legal process is, is going through probate. Now, some states have like affidavit of airships and like, you know, things to go around this process. But generally, whenever someone passes away, it needs to go through probate. And uh, a lot of times you'll also find like people aren't always straight up with you in those situations. So it's your job to kind of figure out if they are the owner and uh, the owner of record that the county has. Because if that's not true, if the county says that, you know, Walter Jones owes this property and the person you're talking to is Walter Jones Jr., the son, Walter Jones Jr. doesn't own the property technically, even if the father passed away, right? It didn't automatically go to one. And so it needs to go through this legal process. So it's it's on you to figure that out. So check the title, check the liens, go get that tree, understand how this works, right? It's all kind of coming together. You need to have the knowledge that you don't you know mess up here, but you also need um, to find good deals. That's the number one most important thing, right? Um, after you kind of do all your due diligence, right? You're going to want to make sure that you have a buyer that's actually ready to, to buy it. Typically, the way I like to do it, my ideal deal is finding the deal, having the buyer in place. So I have the seller on one hand and the buyer in one hand. And, <clears throat> you know, when this happens, I'm able to pay for that property and I have the buyer right here ready to buy the property from me, you know, right at that spot. When you have the seller and the buyer at the same moment, 
and you get the difference, that arbitrage between what you're paying for it and what the buyer's gonna pay from it free for you, there's that profit margin between you know those two parties. And if you have that buyer right at that same spot, you are really able to minimize your risk. If you have multiple multiple buyers, that's even better. Go get yourself multiple buyers in a buyer's list, right? That you can go to for multiple deals. This is a great way to lower your risk. So this is number six, lowering your risk management. Even if you have a great large list, you might not have a buyer right then. You might find that the deal that you have in place isn't a home run deal. You know, maybe it doesn't have the best access or uh, maybe the road, uh, the road leading there is just dirt, or maybe there is no road at all, or uh, the land is just a little bit slop. Uh, there's a slope on it. You know, it could be a number of reasons that make you feel a little bit uncomfortable to just buy the property outright. What you can do is you can do an option agreement or uh, extend the contract to close for much longer. And when you do that, it gives you time to market the property, make sure you have that written in your contract, to market the property, right? And as you're marketing, you're essentially finding that buyer. And if a buyer comes along ready to buy the property, right? Then you know I can buy the property from them and I have a willing buyer and I'll ask for a down payment from this guy or a deposit if they're gonna pay cash. And I would get that whatever deposit or amount to kind of pay for that property if I need to put my own cash, pay, pay for the property and sell it to this guy once this guy, once the buyer's uh, invested, right? Uh, doing it this way minimizes the risk in terms of how much cash you have to put out, right? Uh, a lot of times I'm able to just use the money right from the buyer to purchase the property because I'm buying it 25 cents on the dollar. I'm buying it super cheap and you can too. The last one and the seventh option is whenever you're closing, um, to minimize your risk is to use a title company. Um, a lot of states will focus, will, will just let a title company, any business, really do the work to make sure that they are the owner, they, they are who they say they are, and that they are also uh, free of any liens, mortgages. It, it's really just going to be liens, not really the mortgage as much, unless you're talking about higher scale land. But you'll find that uh, they'll do all the work for you, all the paperwork, They'll get the contract uh, all sorted out and then get the paperwork done and sent to the county for recording. Some states will have an attorney, same, same thing, right? Um, in reality, you can do that to minimize your risk. If you know how to self-close, you can save yourself $1,500. That, that's generally what I found to pay. Other people have paid less, you know, like $900, $800. I've, I've heard that too. I, for some reason, I've had to pay 1500 for each closing, but you can leverage other people uh, to do the closing process for you so you don't have to. So we lower the risk of any potential issues in the future. And a title company will actually ensure that in the future, if something happens, that they will take care of it. Right, and that's an awesome thing. If if that gives you peace of mind that a title company would do that, they would share on the property. It's called title insurance. At the same time, you don't always have to to use it, you know. But you know, if risk is like very important to you, it that a lot of real estate investors do that. So those are the seven things you can do to minimize your risk and not lose your shirt. Know the process with the land investing, um, you know, world. Uh, understand that there's different ways to get deals, right? Um, do your due diligence, make sure the lien zoning, all that is taken care of. And then uh, in terms of uh, the buyers, have your paperwork ready if you need an option agreement contract, build up your uh, buyers list, have that buyer in place, and use a title company when you need it. This is Paul Jane, and it, this was about raw land investing managing your risk so you don't lose your shirt. If you liked this video and you want other videos uh, similar to this about building your wealth, building your, your you know business, um, I have specialties in the land investing niche and I'm prone in real estate related activities. Um, you know, subscribe, like this video please. To, it shows YouTube that, you know, this video is pretty good and it helps with that algorithm. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. And there's freebies in the description below as well. Take care. See you for the next video.